Hi guys, just a quick intro before I get started. Welcome to the channel. If you haven't been here before, my name is Joe, and this is rather dubiously called Rufio. We do all kinds of shitty content here. We do deck profiles, we do combo tutorials, how to play videos and this kind of mush, and whatever other clickbait I can think of, because, well, that's what you YouTubers do best. So if this is your first time here, welcome aboard. Hopefully you're going to hit subscribe before you go much further, before you realise absolutely how garbage this content really is. If this is not your first time on the channel, you maybe want to go seek some help because you, you my friend, are a glutton for punishment. But I'm not going to waffle too much more. The intention for today's video is to have a look at Invoked Ligma uh, and see how I play the deck. Rather badly, of course, but the idea is, is that you'll get some idea of how to play and probably how not to play as well. I've been playing the deck for a little while now. For those of you who follow my Locals vlogs, you'll be well aware of the fact that I play this absolutely every weekend at Locals, and unfortunately, that is the height of the competition we have. However, without trying to sound like I'm gloating or getting too big for my boots, I've been doing quite well the last few weeks. In fact, beating players I wouldn't normally have any fucking right to be playing against, or beating at my Locals with way better decks, way better versed in this game than I am, and yet I'm still taking scalps. So that is testament both to the deck's ability and the fact that I think that I'm starting to mature quite well as a player of the deck. Not to blow my own trumpet, if you will, but that is how it is. So again, I'm going to stop waffling for you. I'm going to get stuck right into the video and you can see exactly how I get on when I play. Okay, so this is my first time doing anything kind of like this. So if the uh, if the setup looks absolutely awful, apologies. But again, we're just going to run through what is here. So this is the current deck list that I have been using. Uh, there are some changes that I'm going to make, so I'll discuss that now. I am probably going to cut the Dragoon package, as cool as it is. Uh, it probably bricks me more games than it wins. It does win games, there's no question of that. But honestly, I just don't think it's strong enough for me to play. Um, I would probably also cut Ghost Spell. This was one of those kind of things I wanted to try out. I'd probably find space for gamma and driver in here although there's some other considerations that i have in mind but we'll talk through the list the ratios that i've got what i would change what i like what i don't like and you can make some decisions on your own from there we won't spend too long on this so we want to just give you a quick rundown i do have a deck profile up there that's a little bit more in detail and i could do a follow-up one if that's what you want once i make some changes to the list so start off with alistair of course we're playing three copies of this it's pretty much a given uh well it's the best starter card in your deck, effectively. Well, that's actually not true in this deck, but, you know, your best normal summon, that's for sure. Uh, so Alistair gets you going. Uh, we've got two copies of Floodly. Sometimes I really want to play a third one, but to be honest with you, with Impermanence, with Droplets, uh, with with everything else, with Veiler, you, you don't need even more monster negation. In fact, the majority of the time this comes up, it's just to become another massive beat stick or something that you can then turn into Vertanaconda and go down your Dragoon plays. We also have Ecclesia, of course, it's a mandatory three of, in my opinion. Uh, this is kind of the card that you don't really want to have to normal summon, but sometimes it's the only way you can play, and that will be enough to get your plays going. The ideal hand, of course, will involve a way to get into Alistair as your normal summon, and then be able to get into Ecclesia as a special summon and go off from there. We're playing triple copies of Ash Blossom. Again, it's the most diverse hand trap in the game. It also wins against rogue decks for the most part. It's just really, really strong. Uh, we've got triple copies of Ghost Ogre. Um... Yeah, it's just Ghost Ogre. It, again, it just it blows out games that it shouldn't. It can stop combos. Dead apologies if you hear any noise in the background. Loud cars going past. Yeah, it's just really strong at the moment. In the format, of course, it could be changed out. Something like Droll could be a consideration, at least for the sideboard. But again, that's a that's a whole other story. Um, Ghost Spell, again, the idea here was because... In fact, it's probably more of a meta call in my local, uh, my local group. Because, of course, that's where I'm playing. But this could easily be anything else. You could swap this out. And again, I would happily take this out and play. Even another Nibiru and another Veiler would be way better. Um, it doesn't come up enough. When it does come up, it just wins games. It's a really strange card. But it doesn't come up enough to, to sort of warrant it. For the same reason that I wouldn't play Dragoon going forward. We have double copies of Vela again, just didn't have the space for the third, and two seemed fine with Droplet and Impermanence already in there, and of course Fleur to play into other bits as well. Two copies of Nibiru has been absolutely sufficient. Uh, it's one of those cards where I feel like three kind of makes sense, but you know that you're going to open multiples, and I know that that's bad logic, so don't crucify me for that. I already know, you don't have to tell me. Uh, but two Nibiru seems absolutely fine. If you see it in your hand, that's great against the combo decks, but there's an awful lot of games as well where it's just absolutely dead. People who are smart actually play around it, so it's not a problem for them anyway, but it does come up. 
We, of course, have our two mandatory bricks in here. Dark Magician and Red Eyes, of course. If we want to play the Dragoon Package, you basically have to play these. Uh, the one good thing that this deck does have going for it is that you can hard make it with Invocation, which does come up sometimes. Trust me, I've done it enough times that it's won me games. Uh, but really, honestly, I think it, it doesn't it doesn't warrant being in there anymore. But that's, that's again, another debate for another day. Uh, we've got triple copies of Meltdown because, of course, that's how you get into your plays. Pretty obvious. Two copies of Invocation. There's an argument for a third one here, particularly if you are playing the Dragoon Package. And also the fact that this is a massive hand trap magnet. So a lot of the time, people are going to stop this for your plays. And when they do, a third one can be a really good follow-up. I'm still playing two at the moment. I would very, very much be tempted to play three, though. Something you should definitely consider for your own lists. We've got triple copies of Disciple of Nadir, or Nadir Servant, uh, as it's now called. Um, again, honestly, this card is wild. Uh, the best thing about this, of course, is not the fact that it searches. It's like a rotor for the deck, obviously. It's the dump from the extra deck that makes this absolutely insane. It can dump Titanoclad if you want to be able to get cards for next turn. Uh, it can dump interrupts you can dump entis to blow cards up you can do all kinds of good stuff with this it's just a really 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 insane card honestly like the best card in the deck almost we have triple copies of forbidden droplet really really strong sometimes i'll slide a copy of this out if i feel like i've got enough monster negation i don't really need more i can play more impactful cards uh, but it is a really really strong one and it's good going first or second if you go first of course you just set it because it's quick play if you go in second it can help protect your board against your opponent trying to interrupt you uh, and of course it can shut off really important cards for them and stop them from reacting with whatever card you effectively desire. We have a single copy of Terraforming, pretty much mandatory in a deck that plays field spells. And of course, we play one extra in here, one that people are going to absolutely hate, but I don't give a fuck. So if you want to play my build of the deck, you're going to need this bad boy in as well. We've got one copy of Red Eyes Fusion again for the brick package. But again, it's Dragoon, it's whatever. Um, Mystic Mine. Okay, so game one, you you just win if you see this because people don't really main outs to it. Uh, for the most part, a lot of people don't have enough about them as well to know when to just scoop if they don't have an out. I mean, I've had games where I've literally played till the end uh, because someone thought they might have had an out. Bear in mind, they searched the deck, but they never noticed. But I won't name and shame them. They know who they are. And if they watch the channel, it'll be a good laugh. Um, but yeah, honestly, like Mystic Mine is insane. I know people will hate it, but honestly, I'm going to sit there and watch you combo for 15 minutes and then I'm going to ruin your fucking day for being such an asshole. Triple copies of Infinite Impermanence. After Ash, maybe the best hand trap, I would say. Absolutely insane. Again, going first, you can just set it. You can switch off co columns. The amount of times you will flip it over and someone plays a card in the zone, it's fucking glorious. Um, we have one copy of Punishment. I want to play more copies, but it... I don't know. It's so insane. It's so powerful. It's such a blowout card. But if you get forced to go second, it doesn't do anything. Um, so that is a, a consideration. It's something that you can maybe slide extra copies of if you want to play a more control-heavy variant of the deck, one that you just want to blow people out. There's definitely some uh, consideration that should be given to this card. And the extra deck is pretty much standard all the way through. We've got super poly targets because we play it in the extra. Uh, so we've got two Mechaba, uh, one Purgatrio, one Orgoades, uh, and that is how you pronounce it, by the way. Uh, we have one copy of Bastard of the Ashen Dragon. Sorry, Titanoclad. My bad. Uh, we have two copies of Entis. You could easily play a third in here if you can find the room. Uh, we have a copy of Dragoon. Again, a card that you could probably cut even for a third copy of Entis would be useful. Uh, we have Chimera Fleecia. You can play any targets you like. Uh, you could play... Uh, what's the guy that you can use against the Infernobles? Uh, I can't remember. You know the one. Maybe you don't. Who knows? Um, Draco... Uh, Draco... Uh, is it? Let me see if I can find it on here. Draco... This guy. This guy, you can play this one. Uh, a dragon type and a warrior type. Of course, this can be used to out Borrowed Savage and things like that. So definitely something to consider as an option in there. Uh, we've got the pretty much mandatory Starving Venom Fusion. Absolutely insane card. Uh, we've got Mud Dragon of the Swamp for other decks. Uh, we've got these for the Invoke Package. You already know how this works. You have a copy of Predator Plant Verts Anaconda. This is for the Dragoon thing, but it obviously comes up because you've got other options here, like Super Poly, that can take care of things. And we have one copy of Omega because it can act as a bit of an interrupt um, and things like that. Again, I think you get a bit more value out of this if you do play Gamma and Driver, um, but it, it's still useful even just in this position here. But again, there's actually a little bit of flex spot in here, especially once we get rid of Dragoon, so something to consider. 
Uh, in the sideboard, we've got one copy of Pankratops. In fact, my, my sideboard has changed very slightly from this, uh, but this is more or less what it is. Uh, so we're seeing one copy of Pankratops, just an absolutely insane going second card, as we know. Lancia, I think, is really highly underrated at the moment. It's blew me out so many games that people just don't expect it. Uh, and especially the Call by the Grave is not really a thing anymore. It's pretty good for that. We have triple copies of Super Poly. Again, good going first or second. There's some decks that just cannot deal with this card and it'll win you games. Uh, Lightning Storm at three. I think I've got Feather Duster in here instead of the Pancratops. I don't know whether that's correct or not, but let's not go into that. Uh, triple copies of Lightning Storm. Again, for back row decks. Obviously, it deals with them. Uh, and then, you know, you can clear out monsters if you do get decks that are sort of really heavy on monsters don't really have any protection. Uh, we have double copies of Mystic Mine. It's like Dark Ruler No More, but it says no permanently. And you can literally just sit there there, build up whatever resources you want, like get into lightning storms, blow out their entire board, super poly everything, and then attack for game. It does work. And we have triple copies of Dark Ruler No More. We already know exactly why this is in here. Okay, so we're going to start off by getting into some games. I'm just going to go through two or three of these, maybe, just so you can get an idea, depending on how quick they end. Uh, we're looking at the EU competitive one. I'm not doing DB for this because I don't have six fucking hours to wait for a judge call because my opponent doesn't know how to play. So we're going to play this because it's automated and will be a little bit easier to get to the point. I do find that the randomization on this is kind of weird in that... You'll normally just open really good hands all the time, so that can be a little bit skewing. Maybe that's just my opinion. Oh, look, this guy here. People who play Mystic Mind completely suck at their lives. I think that's a really polite way of saying that he fucking dislikes me. Maybe I should play against him. Yo, this guy's looking. 1v1, Master All 5, pre-release. Do we do it? Fuck this guy. Let's go. I'm readying up. Let's see if he let's see if he takes it. I'm so hoping I see Mystic Mine in first turn. We'll give him about another ten seconds to decide if he actually wants to play against me or if he's just gonna sit there shouting about people who play Mystic Mine. Come on, man. Take it, take it, take it. I wanna absolutely ruin your day. Come on, man. No, okay, fuck you. Right, let's move on. Let's let's host one because fucking waste my time. Uh, so we'll just do one of uh, yeah, all that, all that's pretty normal. Um, okay, cool. Let's do this, and hopefully we get someone who takes on. Normally the matchmaking time isn't too bad on this. There's a lot of people who sort of just sit there looking for games. So hopefully we get someone. If I don't get anything pretty quick though, we'll move on to the US servers and see what happens there. Uh, Raisin X three. Um, yeah, sure. Uh, apparently not. Wotak. Hopefully that doesn't mean anything offensive in the language. Or maybe it does, who cares? Right, we're going to go paper, and boom, it does me the job. Okay, we're going first. Let's see what we get here. Uh, Sure, that's certainly a hand. I mean, do we just shotgun it? Let's shotgun it. Let's see what happens. Like, They're definitely going to stop this, though. Let's go. No. Yo, okay. Uh, I think we can just end there. There's nothing really else to do, so let's go with that. Let's see what happens. Here's where he kaijus it or something. Uh, okay, what are you playing? Pot of duality. Um, sure, let's go with no. You can do it. Mystic Mine. Oh, this guy's playing Mind Burn. Fuck me, I deserve this. Okay, I guess we've got to stop the mine. Uh, we're going to stop that. Because we need to stop the other mine, and then we can play. Hopefully. I don't think I... No, I do main ways to get around this, I guess. Uh, no, we stop that. We have to... Uh... <laughs> This is an example of a bad Mystic Mind player. Okay, so that's game one. Okay, let's let's try again. Uh, we'll ready up. Hopefully we don't get anyone that bad again. Nightcore. It's a good start. You have a terrible taste in music, my friend. First to go. Let's get it. 
okay, well, we've pretty much opened, like, the hand that you want to open, so this is pretty good. Okay, so we're going to start off with the usual. This is going to be usually be your normal summon. I have a thing about playing things in this zone. I don't know why. Okay, so we're going to go Alistair Search. He'll inevitably get hand-trapped, because it always does. So let's see if they stop it. If they do, we pretty much are forced to go into the extra deck and not be able to get access to our invocation. But at least we can get Ecclesia onto the field and get our plays going that way. Uh, yeah, okay. Is he allowing it to go through? Sure. Maybe he has something, like, better. I can't really see why you would allow it to go through, though. Like, force me into a bad place, maybe. Like, if, you, if you're playing this deck, that, that's kind of the worst interrupt um, for the most part. And it is usually the one that people will throw at you. Okay, so we've got that going. That's fine. Uh, yeah, okay, let's not do this stupid. I'm playing at like a weird angle, so it's like messing with me a little bit. Can you stop this? No? Okay. Well, we're not in a position to get Nibiru. That's good. Okay, so we want that back. And, like, this is going to be the kind of standard opening play that you go for. This is the most common line of play here. Uh, and depending on what I've got in my hand, depends on what I add off here. Um, like, quite easily, we could go for Titanoclad here, uh, add the Fleur. Or we can add another Ecclesia, so we've got a follow-up play for the next turn. And then off this, we can add the Trap card and go from there. So, uh, for me at the moment, I would probably say, let's go, we'll activate you. And we've already got a Negation in hand, plus this other Interrupt here. Uh, obviously, we're not going to stop our own play. Uh, this is probably a bad place. Maybe don't put it here. Maybe put it here so there's no like weird arrows that can mess with you. So we'll add off that. Uh, so I think we get... F no, we'll get the trap here because we can get Fleur off this if we want to. And then we've got another interrupt to follow up with. Uh, so let's go with this. And again, you may contradict this. You may not get on with this at all. You may not agree with the plays I'm doing here. But these seem to be like pretty optimal. This works for me. Uh, so let's go with, we'll send this bad boy, uh, and we'll add, uh, yeah, we can get Fleur off this, so that's fine, so we'll add this. So we've got a follow-up for the next turn anyway, um, and then this is pretty, like, standard that you just set this, uh, set this, and then we go to the end phase, so... Like, a lot of the time, this board on its own is enough to just stop the opponent from being able to play. Oh, <laughs> uh, fuck you, I guess. Um... Yeah, you know what? Let's let's let's. Can I stop effects or just activations? Spell trap or monster effect? Ah, uh, yikes. Um, no, you know what? I guess we stop this because we can't exactly stop the field spell. So, uh, yeah, we'll go with that. Uh, Ash doesn't stop uh, the field spell, so we'll get rid of that. That might have been a bad call. We'll find out. Uh, okay, so we go to the end phase. Let's see what happens here. Let's see if he tries to stop me from doing anything. Uh, yes, we need to chain that. Okay, so Bastard goes off, and it's going to get me Fleur. So I've already got my Ecclesia for next turn. I've got a Fleur for another way to interrupt. So I'm going to add it to the hand. You can Special Summon if you want to. Don't know why you would. Infinite Permanence and Punishment. So he's got five cards playing into, what, like three or four interrupts potentially here? Uh, okay, so he's going to shotgun that. I think we just stop it, like... I think that this can just get me another one of these, so this doesn't matter. And potentially that's his only way to get into it. And if that's his only way to get into it, like, he's going to lose anyway. Um, and then, of course, he's got... Even if he goes for the field spell, I can probably just pop it with this anyway. Uh, but the chance are most of these decks rely on just getting through, like, that one or two different ways into it. I know because I played fucking Subterra Guru. Like, it. Subterra Guru? I mean, it is basically Guru in our deck. Uh, Subterra Numeron. And that is basically it. You play like eight ways to get into the field card and just hope for the best. Tenki? What the fuck is he playing Tenki for? Uh, okay, sure. Is this guy playing Zoo? Zoomeron? Zoomeron! Okay, sure, let's go. Fuck me, okay. Um, okay, so rat effect. Uh, do we just yeet this? Do we just yeet it? What's he going to do? I can't even remember what this does. Send a Zodiac card from your deck to the graveyard. Yeah, no, you're good. You can do that. I mean, he doesn't... He's only got one rat. It's not like he's going to get another one. That's fine. Yeah, okay, sure. Now what? For clarification, I didn't play during the formats when this was a thing, so potentially I'm making, like, the biggest misplays. Like, who knows? Okay. Sure. I'm just going to yeet this in a minute. It's 
Special summon. Uh, no, that's fine. I'll allow it. Maybe I'm making a big mistake. Egg on my face. Right, I think we just yeet these here because he's he's normal summoned. Um, he's got three cards in hand. I think this is a good spot to interrupt. Uh, I want to go for punishment ASAP. Most likely. And get rid of this fucking thing before it becomes a big ass. I'll probably send Entis as well and maybe just pop the other monster and get rid of them off the board. If he's got recursion, there's nothing much I can do, really. Um, okay. Hammer dick. Uh, fuck you. How about that? How about that? Something tells me that this is wrong and I'm going to find out the hard way. Yeah, so we got Entis to pop that. Because I don't want him to just... Like, this fucking thing doesn't matter. It's done its search. That's all that matters. I didn't have a spell to stop it with this anyway. What do you do? Oh. Maybe I should read cards. Lesson learned, ladies and gentlemen. Find out the hard way, I guess. Okay, so we've got Shack and Iron, Whip Tail. Yeah, it's fine. Ugh, shenanigans. Again, for clarification, like Zodiac, I didn't play during the formats when this was around, so it's not like second nature to me to know how to play against this deck. I just know that, like, Rat Pier's God, um, or was God. And then they make loads of these fucking furry things. This guy here, like, Wreck It Ralph. Furry Wreck It Ralph. Leave Penelope alone. Tiger Mortar, sure. Then you'll do a thing. Oh, okay, well, we're just going to yeet you then, sure. Pay cost. Pay cost, bro. Let's see it. Pay cost. <laughs> Not today, my friend. Not today. Imagine that. Imagine after I give you the win. The, the, like, free fucking recursion. You go and just fuck it up like that. Is this where he yeets me out of nowhere, like, with something stupid? I feel like that that's, that's what's going to happen here. Okay. No extra deck monsters. That doesn't matter, really, because we are going to start laying the smack down. Now, there is some risk here. I doubt he's maining anything like fucking, uh, what's it called? You know the one. The thing. Lightning Storm. Can I push for game here? I'm pretty sure I get game here. So we go Fleur. And then we normal Alistair for another thousand. Of course, these are all going to get boosted. So unless he's got something insane in hand. Then I think we win. Yep, we're going to activate you. Let's go. Okay. We activate this. I'm using my touchpad here. That's why it looks kind of weird when I'm doing things. Um, sure. Let's negate you. Not that I think it really matters at this stage. Uh, okay, so we attack with this. Yes. No. I mean, this is probably not necessary and risks you getting hand trapped. Yeah, there we go. That's the win. Uh, to be honest with you, I thought he was going to pull that back because I have no fucking idea how Zodiac really plays. I know I did one of the videos on it, but it's not the same as like playing against it. It's getting an idea of how they work. Um, it's an entirely different ball game. Okay, cool. So we'll probably do one more and just see how we get on. Hopefully it's uh, another back and forth. It's just to give you some idea of how we get on here. Uh, I'm cautious of how long this video is. Just over 20 minutes at the moment, so it's not too bad. We'll get one more in and see how we get on. Okay. Uh, let's risk it all. <laughs> yeah, boy. Let's go. Okay, first. Okay. So this is one of these like weird hands where you just can't fucking do anything that do occasionally come up. Um, I guess we can use this because we can get rid of one of the ashes as a, like an, a form of interrupt with... Droplet, it's not ideal, but if we find ourselves in a bad scenario, we can do that. Nibiru, if they go absolutely insane, but really we have no way to get our play started. So this will be interesting to see how we get on here. So we'll go to the end phase and see what happens. This is where they open the fucking stones. Oh, fuck you. Okay. Buh. 
This guy had it in hand. It's not quite as free, but... Okay, but he can't OTK me. Um, because they only gain when they battle monsters, so that's fine. Uh, he can make Infinitrack, track, which would be kind of annoying because it's a big boy, but I can... I guess I can Nibiru it. Or if you make Zexal, then whatever. So yeah, I'm gonna take 4k. There's like there's there's no point doing anything at this stage. Like let, let's just take the damage. Like if he does anything from here, I'm just gonna nib him, so that's fine. And then it doesn't really do much because he's still got four cards in hand, but like this will be dead still. That's the important thing. So we can't go ahead and do it again and then go for the kill. Now is something we do have to think about here because this is kind of tricky in that if you commit to the board but not enough to stop this going off again and then the monster disappears and you leave him in none, then he can just activate this again uh, and go off from deck. And we know that he's got one on one out of there, but the chances are the other one is still in the deck. Yeah, main phase two. Let's see it. Uh, unaffected by the monster effects, except those are... What does Nibiru do to this? Can Nibiru get rid of this? I'm I'm possibly doing this wrong and maybe being a fucking idiot, but I'm pretty sure it's, like, unaffected. And then now we can just kind of yeet it with Nibiru and just be done with this bullshit. Yeah. Okay, we're gonna nib you because Infinitrack is like the one card here that that could be an issue because obviously we don't really do the whole extra deck thing. Uh, how big is this token gonna be? Is it original? Combined original. <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah, you can be defense mode because <laughs> look at that fucking almost man. Trip myself up. So like in an ideal scenario here, we see Alistair and then our whole plays go, or of course we see um, a way into our engine. Oh, fuck me, this is what happens. This is when it goes bad. Uh, okay, so I could hit over this, but then he's just going to activate this the next turn, and then I lose. Um, so yeah, we're, we're going to pass there. We're going to let him have it, because he can try and attack with this, and I can just half it if I need to. Um, which means you can only go into it in main phase two, which means you can't kill me. Um, it is what it is. Hand is ass, but let's see what we draw. I mean, I guess on the plus side, we're getting all the fucking useless cards out the way so we can get our, our starters should come up soon. And this is, to be honest with you, this is like the only way that I really lose with this deck. Oh, f what the fuck are you doing? Numeron, tr Numeron Trickstar? Oh, fuck me. Okay. If I do this... I think I have to let Candina go through. I mean, I can Ash it, but then he's just going to turn Nibiru to attack. Uh, he can attack with the Nibiru token, which I then can't stop. Ah, oh, fucking light stage. Arrgh! Okay, well. Uh, that's fine. Let's activate, you can add the trick star straight away. Okay, do I stop this? You can use the effect to stop this here. Um, it's fine. You can have it. So let's see what it does here. Maybe he's going to try and make like Dragoon. No, he's going to push for damage. Why wouldn't you activate this? And just yeet my fucking face down. Are you dumb? Are you dumb? Okay. So we're going to keep the invocation so we've got, like, a way to play. That's it. That's all I want to do. Oh, it doesn't have an effect. Fuck me. Read cards, man. What's wrong with you? Rest in peace. Oh, okay, 900 life points. Come on. Okay, maybe not. Yeah, okay, bro. Okay, okay. Fuck you! Fuck this guy. He plays trick stars in 2020. Okay. 
we'll, we'll do one more. That, that's when it goes badly wrong. In my defense, apart from the major misplay, like, fuck that guy. Fuck him. Right, let's go. Bolo. Okay, so we're probably going second. Okay, so we've opened a beer, we've opened Ash. Ah, uh, oh, okay, he's letting us go first. Um, this is actually a lot better if I was going second, to be quite honest with you. Um, I guess we just have to go normal and just go through this line of play. This is really not the ideal, because if this gets stopped, you kind of just lose your ability to play. Um, so, yeah, okay, so he's actually... There's not really anything we can do here. Um... Yeah, I guess it just ends our turn. Like, we could we could link it off, but... Oh, fuck me. Okay, sure. So I have to hope he doesn't kill me, and then I can either Nibiru him, or I just Mystic Mind him. And if he doesn't have a way to out it, then I win, so... This is gonna, like, one-punch man me with the fucking... <laughs> with Krem Marjorie. You watch. That's what's coming. I can feel it. I've played this deck before. I know how it goes. Okay, let's see what he does here. Set what? It's Gren. It's gonna be fucking Gren. He said he thinks I'm gonna run into it like a dickhead. I'm calling it now, man. You watch. Oh, what am I so fuck me? This is where I need invocation. Okay, um So we're gonna settle this. Hope that he doesn't have back row removal, but if it is Gren, then um which it possibly is, then then he's more than likely gonna have back row removal, but there's nothing else I can do at this stage. I don't think he understands how Mystic Mind works. Paddle Fate. Inspect the border. For what? For what? It, do it doesn't do anything in this scenario. What are you, what are you trying to... Man, I'll just deck you out. Like, I'll just deck you out, bro. This way he's going to rip Twin Twisters next time. You see. I mean, we just don't do anything at this stage. We let him play. Like, if he gets rid of it, there's nothing I can do. I need to be in a better position than this. Uh, okay, he's going to banish six to draw two. There's nothing I can do about that. Of course, I can't hand trap him. But also, he, he, he's he got to try and find a way through Mystic Mine. Yep, okay, cool. Hmm, sure. And this is the problem with the deck, and this is exactly why I want to cut Dragoon, because, like, in as cool as it is, you get hands like this where this could be... These could be two any other cards, and th it, this hand would potentially be playable. And at the moment, it's it's just not. Um, okay, let's end there. Uh, I don't think you're going to do anything for me at this stage. So I can't Nibiru him. I can like I'm going to have one monster effect when it gets to it. This thing, quick effect, target of one, someone can't monster name. Let's graveyard. Okay, uh, sure. We can set this because we can just rip the field apart when we get to it. What I'm going to basically do is just find a way to hard make this. I could go into Alistair and search, uh, but what I want to be able to do as well is get rid of the field spell. So maybe I'll wait for uh, Meltdown to come up. And like, there's two ways you can do this here at this stage. Like, you, you can hope that they don't have a way to out the field spell, um, which there's nothing you can really do about it. Um, if if they don't have a way to out it, then they lose. Um, okay, so he's going. We're gonna get one monster each here. Uh, target one monster your opponent controls. Okay, so uh, I can't yeet it because if he passes turn here, then mine goes. But then I possibly just win. Really, really? If you pass turn, you get rid of mine. Sure. This is interesting. Uh, okay. So we get rid of that. Uh, Nibiru is not going to help me here at all. So what I'm going to do is literally just sit here until I can get the field spell to get rid of my own. I'm going to blow out all of his cards and then go for game. Uh, is, is, maybe he's trying to deck thin. Let's just ash it. It'd be interesting to see what he does here. I mean, the fact that he's maining these makes me think it is Gren. 
Um, we may not have okay surrendered. So I wonder if I, can I see this yet? Let's just save it. I want to. I want to actually analyze what he was doing there. Uh, okay, so let's have a look at the replays. So he opens two ash. Okay, what do we banish here? Is this just like anti-meta something? I mean, the guys made in Regeki and, and Harpy's Feather Duster. If I'd lost to this, that'd be kind of embarrassing. So it's probably a good thing I didn't. Okay, let's see it. So he, uh, he gets another evenly matched. Evenly matched deals with the problem. Oh, he committed too much stuff to the board. That's the issue. So I draw, I do basically nothing apart from mine him. And this is what I mean about Mystic Mine. Like, there's decks that don't necessarily have an out built in that, that can't deal with this card. And it gets you wins like this. The games, I mean, in any other scenario, he basically won this game uh, if I didn't have mine. And and this is what it does for you. Um, Yo, this guy's playing some, like, weird fucking spaghetti -o deck. It's like go second slash double or nothing slash insp It's like stun meets go second blowout or something. What did he banish? I don't really understand what this is. It's just some fucking spooky deck that he's put together. Like Nibiru's not going to help you, bro. This won't do anything for you. This is dead. This is dead now. This is dead. Like, honestly, like anything. I don't really see what he thinks he could draw. Can we see the deck? Yeah, okay, let's have a look. Let's stop wasting time. My man, what? Why did you even play that long? And this is exactly what I mean. Like, there's there's people who will continue to play for a while, just kind of, like, hoping you lose to yourself, which I guess if I tried to commit to plays, maybe, but normally I won't do it unless I think I can win or I'm going to lose if I don't. And yeah, that's pretty much what Mr. Mind does for you. And this is the thing. This is why I made it at one. And if you don't need it, you, you just don't need to use it. But there's games like this where people do not have an out. And that's how you deal with it. Okay, so again, just finally to wrap up, I just wanted to go through and review a little bit. Again here, really, this is, as explained, this is kind of dead a lot of the time. Obviously, we've got a small sample of games. Um, and these cause you to break more often than they're good. So, like, honestly, these need to go... These are probably going to go here. Not not Veilers. Um, Ghost Bell. Uh, and probably something a bit more productive put in. And then, of course, we have more space in the extra deck. So what do we do with that? Oh, pardon me. We've got more extra deck targets. So we can have, for say, Invocation. If we want to go down that route, it can give us an option for something else there. We could go with an extra Entis. We could go with more Super Poly targets. Uh, there's a few cards that work from the graveyard that you can... Uh, what's the Ignista card? The Wind one. Pegasus, is it? Uh, this guy. So this can do something as well. This can be kind of useful, at least when it's in the grave. Um, there are just other options. We could potentially play an extra Titanic light if I wanted another way to search. Um, it's one of those things. But uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. I just wanted to show you how the deck works. Uh, how not to play it, of course, as well as how to play it. Fuck me with my misplays. Um, but largely it went okay. And you can see that even when it bricks, there's still sometimes some ways to play. Unfortunately, when it does go really bad, it does go really bad. But that's the nature of the game. Uh, but there are some ways we can improve that. And one of those ways is to cut fucking cards like Dragoon and cards that go in there. It's just not necessary. And as you can see, when it does set up, the deck is pretty fucking good. So that is all for today's video. Hopefully you have enjoyed the content despite how bad it is. The fact that you've made it this far and that you're seeing this part probably indicates that I seem to have done something right. Thank you very much for sticking around. If this is not the only kind of content you're out there looking for, we do deck profiles, we do combo tutorials, we do market watches, we do uh, vlogs so you can see how much of a degenerate I am at tournaments. All of that kind of good stuff every single week. Three times a week we do uploads as a pretty much a standard. So if you do want to watch more of this, of course, you should hit subscribe so you don't forget to do so further down the line. But I'm afraid that is all for today's video. So again, hopefully you have enjoyed this content. But that is enough for me. Let's go to the outro and I will see you in the next one. This content is brought to you in association with my buddies over at Jam Jam Cards UK. You can find the links to the eBay store and the Facebook page in the description.